Welcome back to Wingnuts, the home of micro maintenance. And on this week's episode, we are going mod crazy on a Sky Ranger. Not this one, another one. RPM was coming down. I thought, it's weird. Never had that on a Sky Ranger before. <laughs> I definitely never had that on a Sky Ranger before. <laughs> Looked underneath it, and there's a great, wicking great big bungee attached to the bottom of it <laughs> to pull it back. <laughs> so there's a there's a, there's a there's a there's a there's a few interesting things with the throttle system. Um, there's been maintenance done, and things have been put back on 180 degrees round the wrong way. And they've obviously had a problem of the throttle running away and climbing to higher powers because they put a bungee in to pull the RPM back. <laughs> nice. <laughs> How are we? What are you up to? Just doing the 100 hour service on this uh, Sky Ranger. I've just done the oil and filter. These nice little covers that he likes putting back on the filters. So I'm just <laughs> putting that back on and going to tie off it back on. Any problems? Um, just a little abnormality on the carbs. The um, choke lever appears to be the wrong way round. Um, so we made a note of that. If you just have a look there, the cable should be the opposite way around so this is the car's been taken off and the choke lever's late ah, choke right, lever's so been uh, released it. and it's been put on the wrong way around and he's put it back oh, that's what's fun. we're just uh, we're just getting ready to set the carbs up on this um, the choke levers with the wrong way round and the cables are interfering on this side you can just see where that fuel line goes in there the clip yeah. has been put on upside down not only awkward to get off but it's interfering with the cable on return mm. so oh. we're just trying to sort that out what else have you done to this um it's had a oil change and filter uh, check this Spark plugs, spark plug gaps were quite far out. Reset those, paste and torqued them, put them back in. Um, we're just getting ready to run it up and reset the carbs and do a carb balance. Awesome. Hey Mark, what are we up to? Um, say a very simple job. It can sometimes not be, but uh, just changing the clock and the choke cables on the scavenger. So, uh, we're fitting some of our loop custom oh. harnesses, which are upstairs. Okay, right. Tint tinted sun visors. Oh my goodness. Which we which have been made. Flat position indicator lights. Oh lights. Which Alan's made. Right. Headset holders, they're easy enough. They're right. Lexan door pockets, which will need to be made. Oh okay. They're putting some foam seat liners in, okay. which is yet to arrive. A overhead switch console, which okay. has been made. <laughs> okay. 
fuel gauge and sender hasn't arrived yet, but we'll need to drill a hole for the fuel gauge. Has it not got a fuel gauge on here? Uh, no. Do they just look around and have Yeah, a... yeah. Oh, okay. Now then there's a nice little line here. Full rewire. So a lot of this stuff like Did the... Did you notice my face reflection <laughs> <plate's> change? <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm. And a full rewire. Oh. So we need to, again, get into it. Okay. Um, see what's going on behind the dash. We see what existing electronic items are in there. Um, I'm not going to try and even contend using trying to match up what was there. I'm just going to find out, find the identify the cables that we need, um, and then start afresh and just go for the straight rewire. Spent a lot of time identifying what's going on, lots of gauges and lots of uh, trip switches and we replaced a few just trying to identify where everything's coming from and where we need to reposition. So what we've started to do, you see the pile on the floor, is starting to rip out cables. So we're really trying to identify and really we're not trying to be led by what's there but more of making sure we pick everything back up so what brendan's doing at the minute is we're putting in a new fuse box to make sure that this is in an accessible place so when you take off the uh, the top cowling the fuse box is easy to get to that's the electronic carb heat which will be going but on the other side we're going to be putting a uh, substantial earth block so rather than using what normally gets used down here, which is a bolt where everything's all attached to it until the bolt gets too small and then they use another one over here they're using another bolt that's in here for the earth and all of a sudden the cables start going all over the place what we're going to try and do is make it very methodical so that the earth all go to one place, they all go to the earth bar making sure that the lives all go to the lives so, these trip switches, they're actually quite nice. We're going to reuse these because uh, they're also quite new, but we're going to then bounce off. So rather than having a lump of inline spade fuses, which are here, um, we're going to put in a nice uh, live bar with uh, varying separate bounce down fuses on there. So we're still tracking discussing as everything's going along particularly the new stuff so we're putting one of our center consoles uh, overhead switches in there so there's five switches that can be utilized there new intercoms going in this as well we need to pick up things like the radio do we want it to stay here where does the area run ptt switches all of those things flap indicators are going in so yeah there's a lot going back into this plane that need to be planned in now um, but what we don't want is uh, to discover any faults but there's a reason why we're doing the rewire in the first place it's just reached that point where it's not really uh, viable anymore. So yeah, making me feel better. The main circuit part, we will run a separate earth up to the earth bar from the battery. Yeah, and then it's back the from the switch back to the uh, back to the instrument. But that's then when we'll daisy chain the live live through, which is when we'll peel off and go to the new fuse off the As Mark's probably already told you, got an earth block put in over there, got the uh, fuse block put in here, and uh, just been uh, uh, making provision to uh, loom cables neatly rather than uh, um, spaghetti. <laughs> uh.
overhead console, Mark. The overhead console. With overhead. <laughs> <laughs> Remarkably. <laughs> um, so this is the overhead console. Got a multi-core cable, which is obviously going up the front of the plane and into the overhead area. But so I'm just making life easy by having... So the, the other end is uh, currently still in the big loop. <laughs> but uh, we've got the uh, multi-core coming in. It's a ground, ground bolt there. And then we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five switches. And the multi-core looping around 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Perfect. <laughs> We've progressed somewhat. So we've uh, added a battery master switch in there. We've also added a nice row of LEDs. So battery master, car peak, rectifier light, and also our flap one, flap two indicator, which is on there, yet to be wired in. We've done all of the primary wiring. We've added a uh, auxiliary power fuse box there so that we can bounce everything down to be individually fused. One of the issues that we have is poor earthing so we've added a fuse, uh, sorry, a earth buzz bar there so now we've separated that all of the earth or negative cables are running this side and all of the power cables or 12 volt cables are running this side so you get a uh, nice separation and therefore should get less interference. We've put in the fuel gauge sender one of our famous undersea avionics trays so we've got the intercom to fit um, we've got the taxi lights um, and the strobes to fit the overhead console's gone in that's uh, nice and our landing lights which we think look stunning two on the landing gear one on the nose So I've just completed a mountain of paperwork for all the work that we've just done to this aircraft. So uh, now that that's completed, I thought I'd give you a quick guided tour of what we've actually done to this aircraft. You wanna come on and take a look? Here's the plane for those of you that have forgotten what it looked like. Some of the obvious mods that we've got straight away is our custom seat belts how fantastic are those they are a stunning addition to any sky ranger and other models are coming on but one of the things we've also done to this is we put in memory foam seat lining and that's a lovely little addition very very comfy here's the new dash this is what we did a full rewire on there as well we fitted a, uh, a ram mount iPad holder which is fully adjustable that can be moved around uh, over there. We put in a uh, ignition style key switch so that should power up that's on there so that now illuminates the battery master and the charge light. <clears throat> the way that we've wired this is so should he add a lithium battery to it if you rotate it to position one it will isolate the charging circuit so that you can't overcharge the battery whilst it's in uh, in flight we've also added our famous flap indicator switches so there's one and there's two don't they look stunning we've also fitted some of our sun visors so a nice little sun visor mod there lock in place aren't they ace and whilst we're up here as well we fitted our overhead console, so this is full lighting, so I don't know if you can see those flashing away over there. And then we've got strobes, which are belly mounted, tail mounted. And this is where we've got a taxi light and the landing lights. And we've also uh, labelled this up as a spare, so should he add any further 
uh, lighting that that's what's up there but come and take a look at these you're definitely going to see that coming one of the other things we've also done to this aircraft whilst it's been with us is we've done the 472 and a half kilogram upgrade very much a paperwork exercise but there's a lot of details um, required in order to get that mod through a lot of change in the placards we've reweighed this aircraft as well just to make sure it's uh, it's within limits but yeah uh, we thought whilst we got it let's give it that extra 20 or so kilograms 25 kilograms uh, and something more to play with. Front end wise, we've uh, rewired the entire of this dash here. So we've got all the new switches all labeled up. We've got the push to reset uh, trip switches, which are in there. I don't know if I'm a fan of those or not, but they're, they're certainly there. Fitted a uh, fuel gauge uh, and the sender has been fitted into the, the P1 tank. And then let's have a look at this for a, oh, let's just isolate that, for a wiring job. So everything run nice and neat. We put an earth uh, buzz bar in here so you can get a real good earth uh, over there. And what we've done is we've basically rewired this to the current Sky Ranger build manual, but we've added in an auxiliary bus so this has got all the fuses in there for uh, car beat um, uh, avionics lights strobes uh, flap indicators fuel gauge ev ev everything's all on the on the orgs bus there so it's all all bounced down yeah, small OCD on the wiring so we've run everything separated the power on one side and the earthing on the other to try and avoid any sort of static noise We've done so much to this aircraft, it's uh, been untrue, but new carpet set's gone in there as well. A uh, stunning, stunning job. I've thoroughly enjoyed working on this. I love working on Sky Rangers. They're one of the nicest aircraft to work on. Um, and that really does make it very pleasurable when you're trying to sit there and mod and improve your aircraft. So yeah, I've enjoyed this one. The guy who owns it, what a great guy. Can't wait for him to... Uh, pick up his plane uh, I have check flown this as well flies lovely and what but threw me out and it was only until we tried to squeeze it back in the hangar is this is a Sky Ranger classic in swift pajamas stunning Hey up! Hey up, Mark. <laughs> Trying to keep warm. <laughs> <laughs> right, you ready then? Oh. <laughs> I'll come out to you then. Oh, right. Yeah, I'll no, no, no. the cockpit. <laughs> but the cockpit's more reliable. Well, I have this <laughs> argument every time. Alan's like, no, it's a fuel gauge. And I'm like, it's the tanks up there. You know what I mean? Hard life, eh, mate? Hard life.